Hey, this is Ellie from the Max on Training team. And in this Redshift quick tip, I'm going to show you how you can use light gobos in Redshift. First off, what are they? A gobo is an object placed inside or in front of a light source to control the shape of the emitted light and its shadow. And we're able to recreate this effect inside of Redshift using a single light and grayscale texture. When working with gobos, it's important to use the correct type of light, preferably either a spot or area light as they allow you control of the shape and fall off. Let's take a look at both options. Add a spotlight to your scene and point it down so you can see the light clearly. At the moment, it's fully visible. So let's add a gobo texture for some interesting shadows. For this example, I'm using Derek Kirk's 4K light gobo pack, which is actually free to download, but you can use any grayscale texture or even create your own. Drag and drop your chosen gobo into the texture input of your light. And now in the render view or IPR, you should see your shadows. So what's happening? Well, everything that is 100% white will allow light to pass straight through. Everything that is 100% black will block any light and the grayscale values in between will partially allow light through, creating these really cool looking shadows. From here, you can adjust the shape of the spotlight by changing the cone angle, as well as creating a fall off around the edges with the fall off angle and curve options. You can also use an area light with this workflow. Add one to your scene, face it down, and drag and drop your gobo into the texture input. Let's decrease the intensity as it's a bit too bright for this scene. At the moment, you won't be seeing your shadows like you did with the spotlight. And the reason for this is the spread value. This allows directional control for rectangle and dish shapes and by default is set to a value of one, which is physically correct light behavior. But if you lower the spread, the light will become more concentrated. So in order to see your shadows, you'll need to bring this down to a very small value. If you set this to zero, you'll see the details perfectly. And from here, for less detail and blurrier shadows, begin to increase the spread slightly. Once you've got your gobo set up, adjust and reposition your lights to add interesting shadow elements to your scenes. Thanks for watching. If you like these quick tips, please like and subscribe.